Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's it's weird doing these midweek. Uh, <laughs> It's been a midweek game, but um, tell you what, my hair's looking sharp. I've done it myself, but Roger, yours is always um, on point, isn't it? No, one's a bit long at the minute. <laughs> right, so, um, so we have we have to talk about it. We can't, you know, we can't shy away from it. Come in, Roger. Um, again, on Saturday, as bad as it was, it very much. If you look at the season as a whole. I'm sure you'll agree. It, it was a freak result, really, wasn't it? That has not happened this season. No, not this season. Um, it's kind of, I think we got a little bit too comfortable uh, seeing that this year we haven't really lost. So mm. the pressure's been inviting and inviting more and more. You know, when you haven't lost since in, in quite a few games, you just think, when's the game when we are going to lose? And you, no one wants to lose, obviously. But yeah, especially for a team that's caught down the bottom. And it can't, it's a perfect example of, you know, teams down the bottom, just because they're not in the playoffs, they still want it. Yeah, you know they come there Saturday. They they were like I think Alex in it like they're playing like they're in the playoffs and we're playing like we're down there. So yeah. it, it's um yeah it was it wasn't a very nice result but they happen unfortunately. Yeah, and in a way perhaps it's, it might be better. To, I know obviously as you say you you play to win, but it might be better to have had that bad result now as a reality check because mm. now every game now it, it is a, it, they're all cup finals now. I know yeah, it is yes. a safe play. But, um, you know, on paper, I think, I, I'm probably right in thinking on paper, you would look at that and go, you know what, I'm quite happy with the teams we've got to play. Um, mm, definitely. What, what's the feeling in the camp with, on that? Pardon? The feeling in the camp about the remaining games? Um, they're not tough games. I think we, we've sort of had the tough game. Well, we've got Romania on Saturday. Last time we played them, they were a very physical, very good side, um, very tricky side. So you don't want to be getting confused with thinking that's an easy game. Um, yeah. Colney Heath, again, obviously they're down at the bottom. Mm. But as we've just seen on the Saturday, there's just been, you can't you can't be going into the game thinking that you, you've won it or, or that it's going to be an easy game because it's not. It's really, really not. You just, like I said, every game you've got to go into, you just got to think, right, we, you know, we're going to play our best. You've got, to, you've got to almost play like you're playing top of the league every game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, don't, these last three games, these last three games, of, of, of the last two games, they're very, they're vital. You know, we've still got a chance to be in playoffs. We just, with yeah. a bit of luck of hopefully the other teams lose. Um, I think we, if we would have won our last two, if we would have won on Saturday, it would have put us in a comfortable position. But we haven't. So now we've got to grind harder and harder and harder just to get where we want to be. And, you know, I've been at this club for a fair few years now and this is the closest mm-hmm. I've been with them to playoffs. So, so. I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned that because we're going to touch on that one a bit, Roger. So the gaffer's just um, signed in, by the way. So both of us have to be on best behaviour. Uh, yeah. So hi, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what was said in that dressing room? Because obviously it was a game on paper on going into Saturday... You know, it was very much a winnable game. I think that's potentially what we all hoped and expected to happen. It didn't happen. No. What was said in the dressing room after that game? I think he was very disappointed because he knows how well, you know, being the man, you know, not just Eddie, but, but Lex as well. I think they're both disappointed because they know how well we can play. And they know that, you know, mm-hmm. no offence to, um, to Hartfield, who we played, you know, both of us at our best games, we are winning that all all, all day, mm-hmm. you know. And to come in and lose three nil, seeing us win nil nil at half time is just. I think we're all gutted. We, none of none of us. I certainly wouldn't have turned around at half time and said, "Oh, we're going to lose this three nil." Never in a million years. But um, but yeah, after the game, he was frustrated. Um, you know, your manager's going to be angry at you, and I think you've just got to take it on the chin. You've got to move on from it, and you've got to make it up to him in the next game. You know, you've got a next game, get him three points, show that you want to play, show that you want to be in playoffs. So there's no point thinking about him, but like, ah, oh, you know, sulking over it, it's, it's not going to get you in there, is it? No, no. And, you know, that, I remember seeing, seeing you all come off and I remember speaking to a couple of you as you come off on Saturday and saying, you know what, season's not over yet. Because obviously no. at the time, because everyone was all blinkered on the, the defeat on Saturday at yeah. home, no one knew what had just happened um, between where and Burko, whereas obviously I, w- I was celebrating yeah. in the stand yeah, seeing yeah. that goal come in. Um, so as we say, the season's not over, sixth in the league, 
Yes, Ware's obstacle difference is better, but let, all we can do is just ride out these next two weeks. Um, I think, I, think, I, think it's down, I think it's down to us as well, the way we train. It's not just in the matches, it's the way we train, it's the way we prepare ourselves during the week. A lot of us work, and I'm not making an excuse, but a lot of us work, a lot of us have busy weeks, but so do other teams, but you've just got to prepare yeah. yourself if you have to. Yeah, well said, Roger, because that is a spot, and I'm sure the Gaffer and Lex would agree with that. Training in the week is everything as well, because yeah. um, that gets the mind and the body ready, doesn't it? It does. So... Let's reflect on your own season. How would you analyse your, your own performance this season? Um, I think I started off very well. Um, I sort of I wasn't scoring loads of goals at the start. I was probably getting more assists than I was getting goals. Um, but I think so far, I've had a couple of rocky games recently. I don't know why. I just maybe, maybe because I can't finish or maybe I'm just not doing the right things in the right areas. Yeah. But I think since Christmas, I've probably been on very good form. And slowly now, I'm having a couple of games where I'm not on form and it's kind of like, you know, trying to get yourself back up there to then yeah. being on form again. It's, it is hard because, you know, you say you have a bad game last week and then you have another bad yeah. game. And then your third, the third game you're going into, you're like, right, I've got to have a good game now. I've got to start performing because people are relying on you, especially, you know, I could be one goal I could score and it could send us through to, through to playoffs. But overall, I think my season's been good. I've been very committed to North League. Um, recent years I haven't been as committed as I'd like to be but yeah I've I've, um, I've been thoroughly enjoyed it this season especially with Eddie and Lex I think they've t taken a different approach to how the team's been especially like I said I've been with Northley for a year three four years and I haven't seen it being run like this before you know we've got great talent in the team um, a lot of potential obviously next year it's not the end of the world if we don't get this year it's not but it just gives us a bigger stepping stone for next year you know, with all, with all the players we got, with with the players they're they're pulling in, um, with the development that's gone at Northley, uh, such as the ground, um, the the younger teams around us, you know, it's 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 good opportunity. Absolutely, I'm glad you said all that because um, those that perhaps don't know what happens at Northley, I mean, Northley is a tiny little village in West Oxfordshire. The population <laughs> is just above two thousand, and the club to be in a step four club pushing for the playoffs. The success of the youth setups, the development team, the first team. What's going on behind the scenes off the field? There is a lot happening. So watch this space, everyone. Mm -hmm. So we have to mention it, Roger, because you said, you know, on, on the grand scheme of things, it has been a good season for yourself. Mm -hmm. So we have to pluck it because um, tomorrow night, the, the fans play of the season vote goes live. So that's going to go live online. If you can't vote online, don't panic because you can vote at the Dickhop Town game on Monday. And I think there'll be no doubt, Roger, that you are going to be in with a chat in, an, in with a shout. Uh, I would, I would like to think so. There are player, there are a couple of players I could name. Well, I won't name, but I think you know. Yeah, you want to win. <laughs> yeah, of course I do. Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. But there are there are players that are up there for, for the contender as well. You know, scoring yeah. goals and, and assisting isn't everything you see. It's it's the other bit that people don't, you know, on Twitter and stuff. People will see, uh, he scored this. He's, like you don't see the people actually putting in the work and the grinding behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, like your midfielders, your centre backs. You don't see you don't see that unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to think I'm up for the running. Uh, be very nice to win out. I think my first season at Northley, I I won Young Players the, Player of the Year, which was which is good. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see when the time comes where what happens. Cool, absolutely. Don't forget, everyone, it goes live tomorrow night. Um, so look out for the web links when they go online. And then if you can't, you can vote on Monday um, at the actual game. So let's do a bit of a U turn here, Roger. So growing up, so who was your boyhood club and which player for you was your all time favourite player to watch or to idolise? Uh, my sav, my sav um, I've always supported Man United myself and growing up it's quite an obvious one but I've always looked at Ronaldo uh, yeah, when when people say that uh, yeah I know I just because when I when I was younger sort of you know he was he was like in his prime when I was probably six seven eight nine years old so I was always yeah. watching him and that's that's the sort of player and the background that he's come from as well you know coming from a poor family he's worked his way up he's done incredibly well mm -hmm. for himself so yeah, that's that's kind of my idol I reckon just just um just looking at him and looking at the way the where he's come from yeah and it's interesting because every time I do ask that question, a lot of the times it completely relates to the position that the player actually plays today. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite amazing. Yeah. 
It's quite a weird. It is quite a weird one. I mean, uh, if it wasn't Ronaldo, it would have been David Beckham. Growing up, uh, David Beckham was another one I sort of loved as a kid and, and loved watching. But it's it's between the two. It's quite a hard decision. I think Ronaldo just pinches it for me. Yeah, Ronaldo. Ronaldo for me always um, is just such a good player. I don't. I don't. Player. I mean, not so much. Not so much now. Cause, you know, he's losing his touch. But but yeah, back when he was in his prime, it was unbelievable to watch. Yeah. And yeah. great sight. Take take pointers from. So your playing career, Roger. So I sort of had a look at it um, earlier. So I sort of done some background checks of my own. So as you said, not long ago. Quite a few seasons at North Lee. So how how did the process of getting into non-league football first start for you? So um, I think my football career is very different to a lot of people that are playing at this level currently or have played at this level. So I, did, I was never at a pro club when I was younger. Um, I sort of started men's football when I was probably 14, 15, right. playing for a club called Milton Under Witchwood. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I played for them when I was fifteen. Hang on, hang on, Roger. Just internet. Hang on. We just lost the sound. Hang on. Panfield. Okay. Sorry, is it back now? Yeah, yeah, it's back, it's back. Don't worry, everyone, we're back. Sorry, Roger. Oh, sorry. Do you want, should I talk that, should I go for that again? Yeah, yeah, go, go back. Yeah, definitely go sorry, back. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, so obviously my my career is a lot different to a lot of other people that are sort of playing this, this level at the minute. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of them have been at like pro clubs and stuff and when they're younger and been to other places. Yeah. I've like, unfortunately, I've never been that in that position. I've never been at a young, a, a pro club myself. I started off at uh, Village Football playing at Milton under Witchwood when I was about, 14, 15 years old. Um, at the time, I went over, I went and watched them, and I was like, oh, do you want to play? They asked how old I was, and I was, how old I was, and I was like, I'm 15. And I was like, oh, yeah, you can play. You're not meant to play till you're 16, really, for adult football. Mm-hmm. But I was like, why not? Why not get a go at it? Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I played there for about two years, and then went to Clanfield. Played yeah. at Clanfield for a couple of years. Um, and then one season, I just decided, I was like, I want to go over at North. I, I think I watched North Lee first team uh, quite a few times. And I thought, do you know what? I want to play this. I was like, I want to play this level. I want to be over here playing. So I took a chance in going over to play for North Lee. I went um, to their reserve team to start with. And it was just when John Bruff took over. Right. Uh, who had come from, where did he come from? I think it is, um, I can't remember where he come from now. Um, but yeah, he just took over and we, it, we was just training and, uh, we played a match against the first team and I think he took a liking to me, um, and then pulled me into the first team and then that season done really well. Um, and then obviously stood, stood with Northley for about two, two, three years. And then I think I went to Sirencester last year and then I come back to Northley this year. So I've, I always know where my bread's buttered. Um, with North Lee, I don't you know, I mean? it's always got a soft spot for them. Simple that, bro. Yeah, like yeah, it. definitely, yeah. I, yeah, I just, I think when when Eddie messaged me and and, and talked to me about playing this season, I, I think it was a no-brainer, really. So, but yeah, I'm not really, I haven't really had much of a, a playing career. It's just, it's just been straight from men's football then uh, to sort of then into like non-league. It's, it's yeah. So. Let's talk through it because you mentioned that you had so I think five seasons within North League, but in three different spells. So looking at that from the start to where the club is right now, talk us through that change. What what's that been like to experience the growth of the club? Um, when I first joined, it was for me the club itself hasn't. I think over only over the last two years the club itself has probably changed for me because I haven't been there that I've only been, I haven't been there that long um, but I think what's changed dramatically is things like the football the football side of it more like the way they play so when I first joined it was a lot different it was run differently I think now they're trying to obviously advertise they're trying to play better football obviously these days football's more technical isn't it you know it's not just yeah. you can't just go around bullying people and, and kicking lumps out of people um, where I actually, I was probably brought up to do that where I was playing village football. I was getting lumps kicked out of me and I thought that was the right thing to do. Um, mm. But yeah, I think I think um, 
it, the way it's changed is just through like obviously now you've got Dory running it. Um, he's obviously trying to do a lot for the club in terms of like getting them a three G for this year, uh, which mm. would be massive for them. Obviously, just money wise, uh, great facilities, good for the team to play on. Um, but yeah, I think they've come a long way because, as you said before, a club like this, uh, you know, they're living in a village at the end of the day. Yeah. They're in the, they're it's in the sticks. No, no one knows about no one. No one really knows about them. Or, or everyone can say they played there, but you know, unless you put it out there and advertise it, you don't. You're not going to know about them, are you? That's mm -hmm. all. But yeah, I think it's, it's, they've come a long way in the last two years. Surprisingly, I, yeah. I when I when I left Northley, probably three. What was it before Sirens Test? I thought I because th there was a season where we just just scraped staying up. We nearly got um, relegated. Yeah, um, I remember that. And I thought that's the end of it. I thought that's that's it. Northley done. I, I, you know, I don't like to say it, but I thought that's where where they're going to go from here. You know, and, and unfortunately these days in non-league football, the money. If you don't have money, some unfortunately it's not where you're going to go. Like, you know, yeah. money uh, money attracts good players. And it is, it's a, it's, it's, it's a shit thing to say. And sorry, my language, it's a rubbish thing to yeah. say. But, but that's, that's a lot of the team. If you look at a lot of teams up there, it's sort of like Burke, Hampstead and Bedford, you know, they're probably paying, paying good money. Um, Northley, we probably don't, I don't know, I don't know what the player, you know, some of the players are on. But yeah, again, it's, that's the way football works. And what can you do yeah. about it? But unfortunately, it's um, that's part of it, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. um, you've got to put yeah, money yeah, so up I, front. I know, I know the firm you got the league. I know the firm you got the league. So probably, you know, but it all comes down to money, and and, and you know, if you've got a bit in your pocket, you can attract good players, and it's 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 a it's a sad thing to think, isn't it? It is, but the thing is, like, it's it's a total package, isn't it? And this is what um, you know, a lot of stuff I'm doing off the field at the minute, and the story yeah. has been. Been doing but like seeing the attendance increase so rapid um that is a real positive sign the fact that mm. the real the players now that Northley have you look at that core the core group of players in that squad that is such a phenomenal team so and i've no doubt any elect will be doing everything they can to keep that and add to it next season no doubt obviously there's always a few that have to go because they get offers that you know you yeah. just can't you can't stop them, but um, yeah, the future is very, very bright, isn't it, Roger? Very, very bright. It I is. Think. The, player, the players they have there currently, I think, um, have a great opportunity at Northley. I think that, mm -hmm. like I said, Eddie and Lexa, they know what they're doing and they know how they're going to structure it because, you know, I don't think they're both in it for a short term, short term mm -hmm. thing. You know, they're there for long term and they know that they just judge, just by this season alone, the players that they've attracted and players that they've got at the club, they know where they can go. Um, not just that you see you kind of see other you see like the good players you have at Northley it, it, it encourages other players to come over and think oh do you know what if they're over there they, they must be doing a lot I want to go over there yeah. so so let's talk about that um, that dynamic duo of Eddie and Lex the, the management team at the club what is it like to play for them week in week out I think they're quite I think both as they are I think they're quite lenient I don't think I've had managers where who've been hot headed, and I, I think, do you know, what? I think they let us off a lot of stuff. You know, I think some stuff they could get into us more and, and bollock us more, shall I say? Um, yeah. But I think they're the way they run it. They're very calm um, when we have bad results. You know, they will moan, they will have a go at us. But the thing about them is they'll drop it there and then. They say, "Look, yeah. boys, you've had a shit performance." They'll they'll throw a, a few into them, like we've got to move on to the next. I think they're very professional the way they go about things. I think they're very committed as well, certainly. You know, um, it's easy, especially in the winter, like things like training to like just sack it off and that, but they've been 100% with it, getting organising the facilities, places to go. Um, also, we've, we're doing things like after training sessions, we're doing like um, uh, videos of the matches, talking through what we can improve. You know, I haven't had that in Orkley before, so I think they're, they're definitely heading in the right direction. Um, I've got a lot of respect for both of them. I think they're, I think for their first, I think, I don't know, I think Lex has been there two years now, right. I think. And I think uh, Eddie, is it Eddie been there two years as well? I think they've both been there two years, haven't they? Um, but yeah, I think this year is definitely, even people could say that it's been a big, big season already for them, I personally think. 
I'm um, glad but... you said that. Because it, it is an incredible achievement. You know, Eddie's first job in the limelight as a manager is so, so different yeah. as a player. And to potentially get Northfleet to a level where it's potentially going to be their highest ever finish in the club history. Yeah. And, you know, that, 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 that's how big this season potentially is. It's mad when you look at it like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hats you know, off to both of them because clearly it is working. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, it, it, it is work. It is. It is. Um, it is working. Yeah. Uh, like I said, they they've got a great opportunity. I think. I think Eddie is is um, very lucky to have someone like Lex. Obviously, he's got a good coaching background. Someone that knows his stuff, and that mm. sort of. And also the with the help of Chrissy Allen, he's uh, he's been fantastic as well, helping out in training sessions, getting the boys going. So you've kind of, in a way, you've kind of got two assistants, and and that's what you need. But as a manager, I don't know if many people have been a manager before, but it's it's not just turning up to games and training, you know. It's organising them, it's picking the squad, and it's not easy. People people get left out, and people are gutted, and and you know, it's it's not easy as a manager to to leave people out and say to them, look, you're starting on the bench, or you're not starting today, or you're not even playing. Do you know what I mean? How you just got to be professional about it, and I think they've done that a hundred percent this season. I think they've just been professional about the whole the whole thing. Fair play, open your eyes, Roger. So let's let's go to you personally now. So for you, non-league football, what are your likes and your dislikes? Likes and dislikes. Non-league football. Yeah. The pitches, dislikes. You get some good pitches. You know, you get you, at the start of the season. Uh, you know, everyone's pitch is good, and and but when it comes to the winter. It's, Especially a team like us, you know, we like to think we're a team that can get it down and play and play really good mm-hmm. football. But it, you can't make excuses and the pitch of shit because it's the same for the other team. Um, not league football, probably sometimes the ref and the and the linesman. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's just game changers. Yeah. Sometimes you know, if they if they're having a poor game and they're just giving crap decisions, you just think, you know, I come here for a Saturday. I want to play a good game of football. And you just you're not helping. Yeah. Um, my likes probably you get a good crowds still. Considering the level, it's not it's not amazing. It's not like you know we're playing uh, like league, but you get very good crowds in some of them. Like when we went to Bedford, you had seven hundred, so the support from the people was very very good. Um, don't know. I, I don't really have much to to say about non league. I, I probably I've only been playing it for I say five years isn't long, is it? Really. Um, but yeah, I just think I think it's a great opportunity for youngsters to people that come out of academy as well. People that come being released, I think it's a great opportunity for them to get themselves back on the ladder again, um, mm-hmm. back up there. If they're looking for an opportunity to get back into a pro club, you know, get your name, get your name out there and 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 do the business. And um, that's what Nongli is great for. And there's a lot of connections that can sort of take you to that place um, and give you that opportunity. So, so yeah, yeah, and that that's pretty much the model with Northley, isn't it? Because if you look at the squad, there's a lot of players that played in some big, you know. Big clubs in non-league, haven't they? There is, uh, yeah. there is. Um, they've had to sort of come down a level to, to, to prove themselves again, isn't it? Yeah, they ha- yeah they have. Yeah, um, some of them are played on. A lot of people are playing non. Uh, they're on league, uh, non-league now. They played at uh, you know Oxford United, Swindon, or, or any. Uh, yeah, exactly. But any pro- they played at a, a lot of pro clubs. Like Jefferson Lewis, he played at a lot of pro clubs. Yeah, um, and yeah, coming down, the older you get, it's still challenging, you know. I know you think, when you, oh, I want to play pro, but it's, <laughs> playing, playing the level we play is still not easy. It's still, you still have to be fit. You still have to be physical. You can't, it's not just a, a, a breeze for, 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 you know, even if you have played that level. Um, but yeah, it's good to have that experience with you as well. Like I said, I've never been at a pro club. I've never been... I've never been had that experience, but to play with players that have, they can sort of guide you and show you things that you might not know about, and it will help your game quite a lot. Um, I've learned that over the last five years of playing non leagues. Players that have come and go, I've learned a lot off. Mm-hmm. Go on, it's a question then. For you in, the, in recent years, has there been a player in the squad that you've really, really had to potentially or even like, learn, learn quite a lot from? Um, I think when I first joined, uh, I played with Jamie Cook. Right. Um, he taught me quite a lot. Uh, I think that improved my game massively from the start because coming from coming from somewhere like obviously Clamfield, there's good coaching and stuff over there, and and I got on, I've done very well. 
but having having played with someone sort of with a pro to someone that being pro for the first time it, you know mm -hmm. you, you learn learn a lot and i'd say that first season for me was very important and i think like in a way sort of he, he, he learned me a lot because he played in the same position as me yeah um but unfortunately the the player i am um, as much as I like to listen, I do like to listen. My head does get the better of me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just, I, unfortunately, I can't. It's been, you know, it's, it's just one of them things. I'm, I'm a competitive person. I don't like losing. I don't like, you know, being the worst. I've been the. I, I try and be the best player. But sometimes, you, you know, if you let your head get the better of you, it, it always, it's not good for you. And he kind of, I remember him saying to me, "Is like you just can't let that do. You know, let your head get get over. You know, get the better of you." But it happens sometimes, and and some people are good at keeping it in. Some people aren't, yeah. um, and and that's some. I think that's something I've always struggled with is is that side of it of, of keeping calm and keeping you know focused. It's as easy as it is. It's sometimes you just you just can't. It's, it's you, isn't it? It's you as a person. It's your personality, and exactly. You now. Yeah, I I I I I'll tell you what. I wish I had the calmness of say our centre mid Nashi. I I honestly. Yeah. <laughs> But I just don't. He's I just don't a robot, him. isn't he? He is. He's just yeah. A robot. He, you know, you you couldn't piss him off. You you really yeah. you couldn't you couldn't say literally because anything to him he wouldn't get annoyed. I just don't have that in me. I just I just don't. Fair play. So, Roger, you can you can mention it or not mention mention it. Obviously, it's totally up to you. But obviously, am I right in thinking you've got a fairly new job? Yeah. Yeah. So for you, obviously, with the football as well as work, what does your average week look like? Um, so we train twice a week for football. Uh, mm. It's currently on a Monday and a Thursday. Um, with my week, you know, because I've just started a job as a site manager, uh, yeah. as a trainee site manager, and it's it's very long hours. I'm getting up at like half five in the morning to right. be at to be at site for half six, quarter to seven. So okay. I'm getting home. I'm getting home about six o'clock. So you're looking at a 12 hour day and then say if we say on a Monday night and the first night we was training in Oxford, I'd, I'd get home at six, I'd have dinner, I'd be out the door by seven again. And then I'd train from, I'd train from eight till nine o'clock, then I'd be back at home probably half nine, quarter to ten, then I'm back. At, it's just, them days are busy for me. Very busy. On the other days, I, I, I try and, I get home from work, I try and gym, try to go for a run, uh, just try to keep fit. Because training twice a week, I just don't think it's enough. Right. Uh, for the level, if you want to stay fit and want to be, you know, be the best you can, I do. I think training twice a week. The training, the, the training. I'm not putting the training down that we do, uh, that we do twice a week. But I think that if you want to be up there and doing well for yourself, I think you've got to be putting more in than just training, training twice a week. Yeah, that, and that's why the pros do it nearly every day, isn't it? Exactly. I understand. I understand. We're not pros. We don't. We don't have the time that they have, and we don't. We don't get paid the same money, but. At the end of the day, we could all sit here and, and and make excuses, but if you really want it, you want it, and you know you, you'll put you'll put anything aside to to get what you want. Fair play. Thanks for showing that, Roger. Um, and you know, Max, respect to you because that that is a big commitment that to put all the football on top of such a demanding job. So big, big respect. So, been with Northfleet for five seasons. So what? For you, is the next step. What is potentially the long-term objectives for Roger James? Um, I still like to play at this level. I mean, I've, I've like I said, I've had a, a, an alright season. You don't know where it takes you. At the end of the day, you, you sort of you make your own bed, don't you? You yeah. know how you how you however your season's played out and however you've performed is is where you're going to set your level at. Um, maybe potentially look at playing a league above next year. If I if I can and maybe you know if if anyone's interested or go to a few trials if you really want to get yourself out there, um, but yeah, I'll, next year I'd be more than happy enough to stay at North Lee if if nothing popped up. Um, definitely, I wanted to stay with the club and and obviously with their future project, projection of like having a three G and stuff. I think that um, it's going to be a good club to be at. Cool. So let's finish up then. So big game on Saturday because. It is always about the next game in football, but this one it very, very much is. Because mm. I think, mean, as we all know, anything less than a win on Saturday, it potentially is gone, isn't it? Yeah, it's down the drain. And, and like, like Eddie said in the change room, it, it's harsh to say, but, you know, 
you lose on Saturday, it feels like we've we've played shit all season. Yeah, I know. It feels yeah. like all that grafting, all that time, all that energy you've put into the whole season, you know. Because it's, it's, a, it's a lot in your life, it is. Like you said, the training, the, the late nights, the, the work you're doing during the season, it's, it feels like you've done all that for nothing if you're just going to lose right at the end. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, we've just got to keep our heads on it at this time and, and, not, and, not, um, and also not underestimate ourselves as well. Just because we've had a loss um, and we had a, a, a draw against where, OK, we've had two results that haven't gone our way. But you've got to keep digging, you've got to keep grinding, you've got to think, right, Saturday, we're going to turn up, we're going to win, we're going to do, we're going to play to the potential we can. And if we do, and we do turn up, there's no reason why we shouldn't be rolling that team over. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm confident with that. But again, that's a different matter. We've got, to, we've got to do it and not just say it. Yeah, well, hopefully, you know, that that freak result is out of the way because, you know, you look at, yes, obviously, weren't scoring loads of goals in recent weeks, but that is also a combination of the teams that Northley were playing in recent yeah. weeks. So, when you play the teams at the top, you're not banging in three, four a game. So, no. You know, we, the, really- the, the thing is, if we, you know, the opportunities we have, we should be banging in three, four a game and we've had opportunities to bang three, four, but you could say that about every game. You could say, oh, I yeah. could have banged three. And but like I said, if it, you could say that, and if you was banging free a game in, you wouldn't be playing at this level, would you? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's just how it is, unfortunately. Cool. So, Roger, we're going to wrap it up there, I think, because um, it is literally just gone past thirty minutes. Okay. Big, big thank you to you because, as you just said, you know you're doing twelve-hour days, um, and it is a big, big commitment to take this sort of time out. So it's much appreciated by me, the club and the That's fans okay. and everyone. Um, but all the best for Saturday. Thank you very much. I hope to, uh, are, you there, are you there Saturday? I'm actually now away for a week uh, with my family in Norfolk. So it's a bit of, for once in the first time about nine months, I'm actually going to be switching off pretty much online, which okay. anyone that knows me, that's not what well, I do. <laughs> hopefully you'll be looking on Twitter and we'll, um, be having yeah. more free points. Exactly. I, it's going to be very hard not to be glued to the result, um, and equally on Monday as well, because. Um, well, like I yeah. said, if we, if we put the shift in and we're on form, and I, you know, on paper, I don't see why we shouldn't be winning. Exactly. Exactly. So that's a good way to to end it, Roger. But thanks again. No, you're um, And I will see you very very soon. But thank you everyone for watching as well. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye.